Hey guys, welcome to Allotronics, I'm Gregory and this video is a brief continuation about the baseband speech processor we saw on the last video. In this video we are going to understand how it works here on the bench and we're gonna go to the computer where I have a recorded audio file where we can hear the output of the board. We're also gonna go to Octave to create the inversion process where we can hear the modulated audio to see if the board really works. Take your coffee and come with me. Well guys, I have here the PCB and I soldered here an input jack where we can connect an audio source and here we have two outputs that goes to two jacks where we can record the output of the board using an audio recorder. This way you can listen to the IQ signals and you can go to Octave to try to up convert the baseband IQ signal to a real audible signal where you can listen if the baseband conversion process of the PCB works and you can hear if the quality of the audio is good enough. Before we record any audio with the audio recorder I connected the signal generator to the input of the board and here we are seeing on the oscilloscope the I and Q signals in time domain and guys you can see here on the oscilloscope we have a one kilohertz output signal the yellow signal and the q signal the green signal is delayed by 9 degrees and this difference of 90 degrees will be constant for any input frequency we apply here the board works with a 0 to 4 kilohertz input signal so for any frequency between 0 and 4 kilohertz in the input the main frequencies where we have power in a speech signal we gonna have the 90 degrees difference between I and Q. And this is very clear here on the oscilloscope. But guys, what gonna happen if you try to increase the frequency to 1.5 kilohertz? What gonna happen to the output signal here on the oscilloscope? Let's see. Now that we have 1.5 kilohertz on the signal generator, we have in the output 500 hertz. And this makes sense, guys, because we are down converting the spectrum by 2 kilohertz so 1.5 kilohertz will become negative 500 and a negative frequency here we see as a lag on the Q signal so we have a negative 500 hertz here on the oscilloscope is represented by the IQ baseband representation as the Q signal being delayed by 9 degrees. We are gonna see that the phase will swap around when we crosses 2 kilohertz because over 2 kilohertz now we're gonna generate positive frequencies and for positive frequencies the Q signal needs to lead the I component. So let's increase the frequency and take a look now guys. This is so beautiful. Now we have 2.5 kilohertz on the signal generator and here on the output we have positive 500 because we got 2.5 kilohertz and we downshifted by 2 kilohertz. So 2.5 minus 2 kilohertz is 500 positive. And we can see that now the Q signal, the green signal, leads the I component. This represents a positive frequency. And this process continues until we have 4 kHz of input. Of course, guys, we also have the attenuation of the reconstruction filters. And the variation of amplitude is only the low pass behavior of the output reconstruction filters. So the signal is working fine here. Exactly at 4 kHz, we have the maximum positive frequency on the output 2 kilohertz and this frequency is maximum attenuated by the reconstruction filter using the xy diagram here we can see actually the vector rotating and this is very beautiful we have the i component here on the x axis and the q component here on the y axis and you see that if i go close to 2 kilohertz guys this is where we have the minimum frequencies at the output this vector here is rotating at 100 hertz positive because we are exciting the speech processor with 2.1 kilohertz 2.1 downshifted by 2 is 100 positive so we know that this vector is rotating clockwise and i can actually decrease the frequency and we're gonna see it here you see the signal rotating in the clockwise direction and if i increase the frequency we actually see the rotation going to a larger amplitude and guys why we have a decreased amplitude when we are generating low frequency outputs this happens because my circuit design is actually ac coupled the output reconstruction filters are AC coupled. This actually generates a knot exactly at zero hertz because zero hertz 
cannot pass through the AC couple. So the baseband spec the, the output baseband spectrum of this board actually has a very deep notch exactly at zero hertz. And this is by design because it simplifies the circuit. And for a speech signal, for a voice signal, we actually cannot listen to the difference generated by the notch. It's a very narrow notch that we don't perceive as an audible difference. If the input frequency is below 2 kilohertz, now we have negative frequencies because frequencies below 2 kilohertz will be down converted to the negative side of the spectrum. And we can see that if I decrease even more the frequency, we have rotation of the frequency of the vector to the other direction. Okay guys, let's take the recorder and actually record a speech signal. We're gonna record it to an SD card and you're gonna listen the output in the computer. Let's go. So guys, let's see what we have here. We have here Octave and I created a DSP file here. This file is available on Patreon. You can support the channel, becoming a patron, have access to all the files of the project. And here we can listen the IQ signal generated by the board, by the speech processor. And we can actually here up convert the baseband signal to a real audible signal where we can hear to see if the process actually works. And we're gonna understand if this design is helpful to create a single sideband transmitter. First, let's listen to the original audio recorded from the speech processor. Let's see, let's see guys. <laughs> We cannot understand because actually we are hearing to only half of the spectrum down converted and the other half is folded over. So actually we are listening to the positive frequencies and the negative frequencies folded over it and downshifted. This is why we listen to this very strange audio. <laughs> we can actually listen to a 2 kilohertz tone that we have on the signal. I think this tone is generated by the analog. I think my input anti-aliasing filter is resonating and is generating this signal. Because when I touch the board with my finger, I listen this signal going up. So I know that it has something to do with the analog section and not with the DSP firmware. But okay, let's process this file to up convert it to an audible frequency. Let's run. Okay. And now we can listen to the converted output. Hey guys, welcome to All Electronics. This is the baseband speech processor output audio. Hey guys, welcome to all Beautiful the Beautiful guys! This is the baseband speech processor output audio. Hey guys, welcome. It works really, really well. We can listen to my voice, my original voice. My original voice passed from my smartphone to the speech processor board. It was down converted to a baseband signal, IQ signal, useful for single sideband modulation. We recorded the IQ signal with the audio recorded and now we created the reverse process here on Octave and we can actually reconstruct the audio and listen to the original audio with pretty good quality. Actually, this is pretty good actually. Remember guys, the project uses an AVR 8-bit microcontroller. Listen again. Hey guys, welcome to All Electronics. This is the baseband speech processor output audio. Hey guys. Guys, for me, this is amazing. This works pretty, pretty well. We only need to understand where this 2 kilohertz tone is coming from. As I said, I think it comes from my input anti-aliasing filter. And actually guys, I want to know what you think about it, but I'm thinking in recording a third video about this topic, because if you saw the source code I posted on Patreon, you saw that on the firmware, we have more DSP tricks. You saw the way I designed the down converter using only a switch case statement. And this worked because we are trying to down convert 2 kilohertz using an 8 kilohertz sample frequency. And all the sine and cosine transformations are only zeros 
ones and negative ones. So I actually implemented the down conversion process using a state machine. This is a very useful and very interesting DSP trick. I'm thinking in recording a new video about it. So leave a comment if you want to see a new video about this project and if you have some idea where this 2 kilohertz tone is coming. So guys I hope you enjoyed this video. If so please subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, send your friends and remind yourself you can support the channel becoming a patron. Link on the description. See you in the next video of Aulatronics.